A prompt is a sequence of tokens that are inputted into a language model. It impacts both the direction as well as the quality of the model. Have a bad prompt or you are going to get bad results out. Hey, welcome back to another data science video here on the channel. This is going to be the first video in a new series that I am developing on OpenAI, LangChain, and LLMs. And I'm sure we'll expand this out to other subjects in the near future. Today, I'm going to get you started on building your first ever prompt and prompt templates. What we're going to need for this essentially is OpenAI, an API key, and also LangChain. So I'm going to get you guys set up with each of these steps before we do start coding in Python. Now, with that being said, if you are excited to start learning AI, let's start coding. All right, let's get started. So we're at openai.com. Make sure to click over here to the right, which is going to be log in. And then you're going to see this page that says apps. Now, this is probably going to change by the time you guys are watching this video, just because Literally, I think yesterday or this morning, OpenAI just announced a brand new app store. So I assume the UI is going to change. But either way, you're going to click over here that it says API, and then you're going to get into this dashboard. Now, to create your OpenAI API key, you're going to go over here to the right, and then you'll see these few options, right? Playground, assistance, fine tuning, API keys, files, usage, and settings. So what you're going to want to do is go over to your to API keys. Now, I have three over here and the first time I actually built one out, I actually messed up. When you create your secret key, make sure to you that you store it because you have no opportunity to go back here and grab your secret key again. So very important that you copy this down probably in a few locations so you do not lose it. Otherwise you're gonna have to keep on creating new keys. So how you can create a new keys is you just go over here. It says create new secret key. Click on that. You can have a specific name if you want. I'm going to say test for YouTube video, right? So then create secret key and it says verify that you're a human. Continue by completing this quick puzzle. So let's go through this puzzle. So click the arrows to sum the dice and match the number on the left. So we have to find something here that's 27. So we have 4, 7, 11, 13. No. Three, four, six, seven, nine, no. Three, four, five, ten, twelve, no. Seven, eight, ten, eleven. Five, eleven, fourteen, fifteen, eighteen. One, five, eleven, fourteen, sixteen. Six, nine, ten, twelve, fifteen. Three, four, six, nine, ten. Three, five, six, eight. 2, 5, 9, 12, 17, 4, 3, 4, 2, 1, 5, 11, 17, 22, 27. Wow, they really made it on the last one. Or I'd assume it's probably close to the last one. Oh, we have another one. We have to go through 15 of these. Um, this is brand new. So I'm going to go through these really quick and then uh, show you how that works. All right, so you've proven that you're human. Continue. All right, so my new secret key is here. Now in this video, I'm, I'm blurring this one so you guys can't use it. Uh, create your own so I don't get charged. Um, but what I will say is 15 that we had to go through. Man, um, I get annoyed when I have to do two sometimes with Google. That was a lot. All right, so now you can click done. All right, so now that you have your API key hopefully saved somewhere, it is time to get coding. Now what I'm gonna use is Google Colab. So we're gonna go to is colab.research.google.com. You can also just Google search that. And then we're going to click over here to a new notebook. All right. So first thing we're going to have to do with our Google Colab notebook is rename it. So make sure that you put a name over here. I'm personally not going to do this because this is just a live coding one. And I already have mine saved uh, that I prepped for this video. All right. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to pip install two different libraries, OpenAI, as well as LangChain. Typically, you don't have to pip install. A lot of stuff is already built in to Google Colab, uh, but these are not fully set up. So pip install OpenAI, just like that. I'm gonna just do another line of code, just click this plus code. And what I'm gonna say next is pip install LangChain, like that. And I'll build out a few other lines of code. And what I'm going to do is run both of these. They're going to expand out quite a bit as 
these install. So let's do that. And while that is being set up, we're gonna prep a few other things for our code. So the first thing we're gonna do is import in OS, and then we're gonna say OS dot environ. So environ like that. And then what we're gonna do is set up our open AI API key. So pretty easy to do that. Open AI underscore API and then key and then equals and then paste in your API key. Now I'm gonna paste in mine, but it's gonna be blurred on the screen. But your key should start with SK and you should have a quote and you should have double quotes around here on the outside of both sides. All right, so now what we're gonna do is put from lang chain dot LLMs import, and we're gonna say import an open AI. So open AI like that, and that runs, no error there. If you do get an error, that you didn't pip install correctly. All right, and now we can start coding our first prompt. So what you have to do is set LLM, we're gonna say that's gonna be equal to open AI. And what we're gonna put inside over here is a temperature. Now you can also specify specifically what model you wanna run this on. I'm not gonna do that for this video uh, because models do change quite a bit. So make sure to go to the open AI website and choose a model to your liking if you wanna specify specifically. Um, all right, so I, this thing actually needs to be lowercase. I accidentally made the uppercase, so open AI. And I put temperature equals 0 0.9. Now, temperature, an easy way to remember what temperature is, and I've, I've seen this on a lot of different blog posts and YouTube videos, so I'm far from the first person uh, to come up with the analogy. Think of it as like spiciness of the response, and maybe think of it like as a hot sauce. So the temperature goes from 0 to 1. 0 0.9 is pretty spicy, right? Maybe this is your hot, hot sauce that you find at... Uh, your Mexican restaurant. Maybe if it's at 0 0.5, you're at like a mild hot sauce, right? 0 0.2, not really hot, but it does add a little bit of flavor. So think about that as your temperature. And as I say that, I'm actually gonna probably get Chipotle later today after this video. All right, now we have that over here. So you can just run that over here. That sets up our LLM. And what we're gonna do is create some text. So for our text, this is gonna be our prompt, right? So we're gonna say over here, Create a baseball team name that would be great for MLB expansion, right? And imagine like this is what you're gonna be putting into chat GPT. So like if I went over here to chat GPT, chat.openai.com, right? Let's put this specifically in here. And I'm gonna actually, yeah, I'll keep 0 0.9 for now. I just wanna show you some different results. So I'm gonna put this over here. Let's see what ChatGPT says. So this says, Skyline Storm Chasers. The name combines a dynamic imagery of a storm with iconic skyline concept, creating a sense of excitement and power that can be fitting for a new MLB team. I, I don't like that. Um, <laughs> I think it's a horrible name, but uh, let's see what we end up doing, right? So let's click this text over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna print out our results. So print, then we're gonna put LM in here, and then you can put text as well. And this is gonna essentially take this text string, put this into the LLM, right? It says LM text, and then it will print out the results. And you'll see a better way to do this a little bit later on in the video, but this is our first example, right? So a 0 0.9, the Thunderbolts, which is funny because like when I did this earlier, same exact code over here, I got the Thunder Bats. So we got a little something different this time. Let's try it again. The Rising Stars. Another one, the Rising Suns. So that's with the temperature 0 0.9. Let's see if we get 0 0.5, what happens. So I'm gonna just run this right now. Obviously we're gonna get a different result, but let's see what the less spicy version is. Rising Suns, literally just got rid of the. Again, let's see what happens. And I actually have an error over here. And that's just because I kept running this too fast. So it says, please try again in 20 seconds. I'm not gonna run this again, but just know if you do run this too many times really fast, you are gonna get this error message over here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna build out a prompt template. And what's great about prompt template is you can reuse them. I'll show you a few different ways that we can do that a little bit later on. 
All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a prompt with a variable. So let's set that up. We're gonna have to actually import in something new as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, first thing that we're gonna do is from langchain the prompts, we're gonna import in our prompt template. So prompt template like that. Let's just run that really quick and let's get coding. So when we're just gonna say prompt template baseball team, we're gonna say it's gonna be equal to our prompt template, prompt template. And inside over here, what we're gonna do is set our input variable. So input variable, and you can have multiple input variables. So you'll see it called as input variables like that. And we're gonna go over that example shortly after, but we're gonna put in a city this time. In my opinion, you should have a city for the MLB expansion if you're gonna run this model because the geography of each city is different, the history of each city is different. Uh, I don't like these generic is the nice word, baseball team names. So next thing that we can put in our prompt template is the template itself, right? So I'm gonna say template equals, and what I'm gonna do, is I don't wanna type this out again, is we're gonna copy this over here for the text. And we're gonna put this in here to the template, but we're gonna make a modification. So we still have a creative baseball team and that'd be great for MLB expansion. We're gonna say in, and this time we're gonna have these curlies over here, and we're gonna say city or curly brackets, right? And city, okay. So what we're doing now, with this prompt template is we have an input variable, which is gonna be our city. We're gonna have our template, create a baseball team name that would be great for an MLB expansion in, and essentially the user defines what city is gonna be used when this LLM is run. So let's just run this over here and nothing happens, which makes sense, right? Because we didn't define our city yet. So a few things, if I wanna see what this prompt looks like with our specific city, here's how you can do that. Don't always recommend that you do it. I think it's a little bit of a waste of time, but just for this video and demonstration purposes, let's do that. So prompt template, well, I can just literally just copy that because it's a word full, right? We can put dot formats and then you can put over here city equals and define your city. I'm in Orlando, so I wanna put Orlando in here. So Orlando, and we print this out. Right, create a baseball team name that would be great for the MLB expansion in Orlando. Orlando's not getting a baseball team, although I believe like one of the Magic owners or old owners wanted to get a baseball team in Orlando. It's, it's not happening, but, and if it does happen, fantastic. But this is how you can see specifically with this prompt template, what text is gonna be sent to the LLM. Now, if we wanna see this specifically work with our LLM, pretty easy. So what I'm gonna do is over here in the inside of this print statement, I'm gonna put LLM and we're gonna enclose everything else because this is the statement that's gonna be run to our LLM. Remember we set up that temperature, that temperature is needed, but I'm not gonna call it again. Feel free to do so though. And like, if you're gonna do that, just put this above, right? But I don't want this to get a little bit confusing, but make sure that you have your LLM, right? So now we have this over here and Orlando Sun Strikers. Man, that sounds so cringy. Um, we're gonna run this again. And the Orlando Sun Rays. We already have the Tampa Bay Rays. There's no way the Sun Rays would be a team name unless like uh, the Rays moved out. But uh, that's how you can set up a basic prompt example. Uh, we're gonna do another one this time. And we're gonna do one with two prompts or we're gonna do another one this time and we're gonna do two variables. Another aspect I think of if you're gonna create a baseball team, you need to have a color associated with it. When you think of baseball teams like the Red Sox, obviously red is in their title, but then you think of like the Cubs, like the, the blue stands out, the Dodgers blue. Um, so that goes into the branding of the specific MLB team. So let's add that in over here. We're actually gonna be lazy and copy a lot of this code once again. And remember, our LLM was defined earlier, so you don't technically need to put this in here, but if you're gonna create this on your own, you always need to have that specifically. All right, 
Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have our city here. And then I'm also going to put color, uh, city and color, by the way, good band. Uh, but we'll put city and color over here. And then we're going to say create a baseball team. That'd be great for MLB in blank city. And then we're going to say with primary color. And what we're going to do is create a variable and say color. So we want to run this again, right? We'll just put this over here. Let's do this again. And we'll say our color this time is red. Color equals red like that. Right, create a baseball team name that would be great for MLB expansion Orlando with primary color red. I know it shouldn't be capitalized, but whatever. We'll just uh, change that really quick. And we go back over here, right? This time again, prompt template baseball team format. We have our city in here. We can throw in our color. Let's throw that in here too. And it's going to go over here again, format this text, and then send that text directly to the LLM. Very similar to what we did over here, right? Text specifically, and we threw our text in over here. So we run this this time. The Orlando Red Storm. Do not like that one at all. Let's try it one more time. The Orlando Red Hawks. And that's actually the example that I got uh, when I did this a little bit earlier. All right, cool. So now I hope you have a little bit of understanding how these chat prompt templates work. I do want to show you how you can save these over here. There's a few different ways that you could save these. It's YAML or also a JSON. I haven't used YAML before. I'm not too familiar with it, but I do know quite a bit about JSON, especially back when I used to do SEO. All right, let's do this now. So what I'm going to do is prompt template baseball team over here. We're going to click dot save or code out dot save. And I'm going to save this as baseball dot JSON. All right. Now I'm going to run this line over here and in our files over here. Now you see a baseball JSON is available, which is great, right? That means this one worked and we had no coding errors. So here's how you can load your prompt. You can just say from lang chain dot prompts and we're going to say import in load prompt like that. And also when I normally code, I like putting all these at the very top, but because I'm growing over a lot of concepts in this video, I just want to introduce them as we do that. But when we do some project videos in the future, all these will be at the top. So that's your only complaint about this video. I'm sorry. All right. Now we're going to say loaded prompt over here equals load prompts. And we're going to say baseball the JSON like that. All right. So our baseball is now loaded in our prompt and we're going to say loaded prompt dot format. And let's give it a new color this time. So I'm just going to copy this though. And let's do orange. You know, of like the Florida or, or the Orlando oranges. <laughs> it sounds cringy, uh, but I think that'd be kind of funny. Well, I said Orlando, let's put orange here. And if we have an error because I said prompts instead of prompt. All right, let's see how this works. Well, I should have printed this prints. And check this out. I know it still shows it, but great baseball team. That would be great for MLB expansion Orlando with primary color orange. Now we go back over here, right? This again, we're going to send this text into our LLM. So we're going to just change this prompt baseball to loaded prompt. And we're going to change this red to an orange. Give me the Orlando oranges, Orlando crushers. Don't like that one. The Orlando blaze. Not liking it as well. All right. So that's pretty cool. I, I do want to show you also a way that you can create this into a function. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create all this from above, right? Our prompt template into specifically a function. 
Now, if you're familiar with Python programming, it's not gonna be too difficult. I know a lot of people in this video are gonna be brand new to Python. Just stay with me. I'm also gonna be introducing a little bit of chains. Now I'm gonna make a full dedicated video on chains on the channel in the future. Um, it's kind of tough to build out a function, but not also introduce chains. So let's work through it. Again, we'll have another video so you can study up on chains. All right, so I'm gonna say DEF, we're gonna say generate team name like this and we're going to put city and color over here and uh make sure you put a colon here at the end so then what we're going to say is set up our lm i'm going to say lm equals open ai we'll put this temperature in here and we're going to say 0 0.5 all right and then we can set our prompt template now I'm just going to copy our prompt template that we have over here. So paste that in on this side of things. Okay. And now what we're going to do is create our chain. So we'll say like baseball chain equals our LLM chain like that. We're going to say our LLM is equal to the LLM, right? That's why we're going to have to actually put this in this function that we are creating. Now we're going to say our prompt equals our prompt template, right? Stay with me on here. Okay. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to set our response. So we're going to say our response equals, and what we're going to say is a baseball chain like that. And inside over here, what we're going to have to put specifically is city and city like this, right? And then put color and also our color. And I am having one error. Um, I'll fix this in a second. We're gonna return our response at the end. Response. And our error, and it's my fault on this one, we actually didn't import in our LM chains. So from ling chain dot chains import llm chain like that so that's going to be imported the error should go away and let's run that hopefully we have no errors with this specifically and what we're going to do is we're going to generate our team name so we can just go here to generate team name and we can say print generate team name and then i'm going to throw in here orlando and this time I'm gonna put in yellow, yellow. So what we're gonna do is print out that response for this baseball chain, right? So it says city, we're gonna put over here is gonna be Orlando, our color is yellow. And then text over here at the very end, new lines, it says the Orlando sun rays. So that is how we can use a function this time and again, we'll talk a little bit more about LLM chains in another video. All right, and one last example for this video. So I wanna share with you guys, like you can actually format the results of your output based off of the prompt. When I first saw this in some example code, I was like, wow, there's so many more use cases and we'll be sharing those in other videos. Um, this is only the introduction to prompts. I have a few other videos I wanna create and there's some projects I want to build as well. So let's do this final example. And we're, again, we're going to change up our prompt as well quite a bit in this one. So what I'm going to say is baseball prompt lineup equals, and we're going to do a prompt template dot from templates. Okay. And what we're going to put inside over here is our text. We're going to say text. And what we're going to put inside is our template equals. I'm going to say create a baseball team lineup of the best players in the, and I'm going to say decade like this. And I'm going to put an S at the end. So like, for example, 1950s, 1960s, whatever, right? I'm gonna say use a lineup format. Now there's a lot of formats that you could use for a baseball lineup. 
and we're going to specify that, right? So we can tell exactly our model what to use. Now, here's how we can do this. So I'm just going to call this our baseball prompt. And we're going to say that's going to be equal to our baseball prompt lineup that we have over here. We're going to say dot format. And inside over here, we have to specify our decade and our lineup. So we're going to say decade equals, and we're going to put 1920. Remember, it's going to add an S to the very end. And then we're going to say lineup format equals, and I'm going to say this is going to be one through nine, not zero, one through nine with positions. Okay. Now what we're going to say is response equals LLM dot predict, which I'm actually going to put our LLM again above over here, just in case uh, so LLM equals open AI temperature 0 0.5 should be fine, but I'm just going to put that there too. And we're going to say text equals our baseball prompt. Right, this will be the text that's getting formatted. Remember, I showed you guys format earlier. We go back over here, format, right? Create a baseball team. So this is essentially what I'm doing, right? Building this out like this this time. And what we're going to say, print our response. So just to show you how all this code works together before we print this, remember in the beginning, we defined our LLM. We're going to use OpenAI. We have a temperature of 0 0.5, okay? Up next, we have this baseball prompt lineup. So prompt template from template. So we specify the text. Now we have these two over here with the curly brackets. That's going to be our variables. Now we have our baseball prompt equals baseball prompt lineup, which is over here dot format. This is essentially the same code that I showed you over here, right? Over here, I just made it one line, right? The format over here. And this time, like we actually specified it out and made it multiple lines. And then we have our response over here, which is LM dot predict. We put in text equals this baseball prompt, print the response. And then we have this down below. Babe Ruth, right field, Ty Cobb, center field, Lou Gehrig, first base, Rogers Hornsby, Jimmy Fox, Tris Speaker, Bill Dickey, Charlie Geringer, and Lefty Grove. And funny enough, I've owned baseball cards of all of these players at one point in time, although not anymore because I've sold off some of these to get into other cards. Hey, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it this far, definitely learned something new about LLMs as well as OpenAI's API. Um, with that being said, these videos are 100% for free. All I ask for in return is if you can subscribe to the channel. Uh, there's no cost to subscribing, but it does allow YouTube to share this video as well as other videos that I've created here on the channel to other people that are into data, whether it's data analytics, data science, or trying to learn a little bit about AI. Now, this series will have a lot of videos and I'm gonna put the playlist link over here. But when I recorded this, that's only one video. So. I will be building this out between 20 and 50 videos, hopefully all this year.